An education gap in rare disease training can leave many doctors underprepared when faced with a patient who has an unfamiliar condition. Medscape Education Global is working with medics for rare diseases to advocate for a single discipline approach to rare disease education. Dr Lucy Mackay is giving a lecture at Queen Mary University London about rare diseases. What we do is take an all rare disease approach instead of going into lots of detail about a few. Her brother died from a rare condition. Later, as a medical student here at Barts, she saw there was an education gap. So she founded a charity to teach medical students that rare diseases are not as rare as they think, affecting one in 17 people. While each rare disease is rare itself, people with rare conditions are common in as much as there are 3.5 million people in the UK living with a rare condition, which is the equivalent to um, approximately the adult population living with asthma. But at the moment, that patient group isn't considered as one group with its own unique profile of needs, which it very much has. Medics for Rare Diseases is working with Medscape, the largest provider of free medical education online, to advocate a single discipline approach to improve innovation and research and the treatment patients receive. We found that uh, physicians are vastly underestimating the prevalence of rare diseases by 50 to 500 fold. Um, so they think, you know, one in a hundred thousand, one in a million, when in fact it's one in two thousand. We know that about five percent of the population has a rare disease, but physicians are saying that they see one or two patients per year, whereas they should be seeing one or two patients a day. What's really important about Medics for Rare Diseases and what Medscape are doing is about if you then have someone with that umbrella label of rare disease, as a clinician, you'll be able to put this idea together of how their life might be impacted, how the family might be impacted, what they might have already been through and what they might go through, but also know where to get resources, know where to go to get support for yourself and for the family. There are over 7,000 rare diseases. The average time to receive an accurate diagnosis is around five years, but can be 10 years or more. Patients are often left to coordinate and manage their own complex medical care plans. There's a huge diagnostic odyssey for families. What I mean by that is that they enter the health system at multiple points, often for years. They spend the median of 68 hospital appointments, that's six years, in and out of the system, not getting a diagnosis. So it's really, really important that the students who graduate from Queen Mary here in our medicine dentistry course understand how to recognise that. Working with different advocate groups and medical professionals, Medscape has developed a trusted resource centre for rare disease education under one umbrella. It has around 150 different educational activities. So this is where healthcare professionals can come to find out more about rare diseases, isn't it? Exactly. So we start at the very top of the page with patient journeys. It's all about the patient. We want to put the patient front and centre. Dan was born with a very rare medical condition, wyburn mason syndrome, affecting one in 50 million people. It left him completely blind in one eye. Later in life, he discovered he has another rare disease which affects his growth hormones, leading to enlarged features, hands and feet. He was diagnosed after two years, but others are not so lucky. The quicker, the better for diagnosis. And uh, some people may not be diagnosed for 10, 15, 20 years. And that can have a huge impact on your growth of your limbs, your joints and many other things as well. So awareness and early diagnosis is really fundamental. This is a really big burden on families, but the most important thing is the anguish and stress that it causes and potentially the missed weather window to consider a therapeutic intervention, which might be as simple as a diet, some vitamins. Most of them are not expensive, uh, but if we catch the disease earlier, we may be able to reduce disability or avoid it. If we keep building up rare disease as this single term, to encompass 3.5 million new people in the UK and their families, then we're creating a language that means that those families and those clinicians can talk to each other without having to go into the big spiel about what it's like to have a rare disease and what it means. 